Hello and welcome back to Fat Boss TV. Today we finish our Mythic Dungeon Guide series with the Siege of Boralus. Like our other dungeon guides, this will give you all the information you need to know to easily complete the instance on Mythic Zero, but it translates well into much higher Mythic Plus keys. Now, Siege of Boralus is unique in two different ways. One, it's the only dungeon that requires an attunement, gained through the war campaign, and two, it's slightly different for each faction, as the Horde fights some alliance forces, and vice versa. The differences are largely cosmetic, as just the names of the mobs will change, but there are a few changes that we will point out. So let's kick straight into it. As you move along the waterfront, don't go swimming, as sharks will come up and instantly kill you. Halberds will cast Slobber Knocker at the tank, a frontal cone which deals damage and knocks back any players caught. Everyone should avoid this, including the tank, who can sidestep it once the cast begins. DPS should focus down the footman as they frequently hit the tank with Hindering Cut, which applies a dot and reduces their haste by 35%. This haste reduction really screws with the tank's ability to use spells at a meaningful rate, so the quicker the footmen die, the better. Now, wave tenders will cast brackish bolts at people, dealing a small amount of damage. You can kick this, but make sure you save an interrupt for the watertight shell. This will buff all nearby trash for 10 seconds, reducing their damage taken by 90%, and when the debuff expires, they will deal damage and stun all nearby players. If you do not kick the spell, then just make sure you quickly purge the buff off, as this will not trigger an explosion. Vanguards cast Heavy Slash towards the tank. This sends out a line of shockwaves which deal damage and stun anyone in their path. You want to sidestep this ability before the cast finishes. Now, as you reach the room with the first boss, make sure you clear all the trash in the area, as you do need a lot of space to deal with Sergeant Bainbridge's abilities. You'll also face Marksmen in this area, which deal bursts of damage to random players with their Molten Slug. This just can't be avoided, so the healer just needs to outheal the damage. Now, Sergeant Bainbridge, also known as Chopper Red Hook for the Alliance, will fixate players throughout the fight. The boss will begin with a 75% reduced movement speed. However, the boss will gain a movement speed buff every two seconds. If they reach their target, they will melee hit them, dealing a large amount of damage and knocking the player back. The fixator player should kite the boss for as long as possible, whilst trying to move them into the bombs that occasionally fall from the sky. This will stun the boss for 6 seconds and make it so they take 50% increased damage and have their movement speed stacks reset. Players should watch out for these bombs landing zones so they don't get hit themselves. When the bombs land, they will eventually explode at some point, doing damage to the entire group. If the boss didn't soak every single bomb, which is unlikely, you will need a player to soak them instead. The tank is best for this job, or a DPS using a cooldown. The main difference between the Alliance and Horde boss is when they drag a player towards them. The Horde boss does this over a long channel, which the player should run against, whilst the Alliance boss will do it instantly with a soakable projectile. Immediately after either of these pull-ins, the boss will cast Steel Tempest, dealing damage to anyone nearby. You've just got to make sure you move from it. Throughout the fight, vanguards and marksmen from the trash before will occasionally spawn in. Make sure you avoid the heavy smash and heal the random molten slug damaged while DPS kill these guys off first. After the boss has died, the group must now move through the docks towards the next boss. Packmasters are tethered to their dock count pet, which causes them to do 125% more damage when close together. You want to quickly kill off the low health dock count to remove this buff. The dogs will brute a random player for 10 seconds when they cast their clamping jaws ability. You want to make sure you interrupt this cast with a stun. This is important because the pack masters will charge at a random player with feral charge, dealing damage and applying dots on the way. This is completely avoidable, you've just got to react quickly. Shredders will cast Singing Steel at the tank, dealing large damage to all players in a frontal cone. Make sure you face him away, and as soon as the cast begins, sidestep it. They will also teleport to a location and cast Iron Ambush, which will stun everyone nearby, so make sure you move away from them. Raiders will occasionally drag players into melee with their Iron Hook. Be careful to try and avoid other trash mechanics that you might be pulled into. They'll also cast Savage Tempest, dealing damage to anyone nearby. Just move away from the zone around them as soon as the ability is cast. Whilst fighting the Black Tar Bombers, it's important that the group remains spread, as these guys will throw bombs that explode and deal damage to anyone within 5 yards. They will also spawn burning tar patches that hurt a lot if you stand in them, so don't. Try to engage the commanders alone if possible, or at least try to keep them away from other mobs that you're fighting. They will cast Bolstering Shout, which applies a buff to all nearby trash mobs, which reduces the damage they take by 75%. This buff can, however, be dispelled. They will also charge in a line after casting Trample. Do your best to avoid standing in their path. Marauders will hit the tank with a Curse Slash, dealing damage and applying a curse which increases the damage they take by 15%. This should be decursed if possible. If not, the tank will probably need to kite or use cooldowns if the stat goes high. After so long, you'll come across to an event where a firing squad is shooting down a narrow corridor. Whilst they're shooting, they do a ton of damage to anyone in the area. However, you can avoid this damage by standing behind some of the barrels for cover. As soon as the pack is engaged, they will stop firing, so have a speedy person quickly damage them so everyone can then move up and begin to kill them off. 
The firing squad does have a spotter within it that has an evasive passive, causing her to leap away all the time if she isn't slowed or rooted. Any player that has high uptime on a slow or a root needs to make sure they apply it to this mob constantly, otherwise it becomes pretty annoying. She will also apply sighted artillery on a random player, causing them to spawn patches on the ground which will later be hit by an artillery strike. You want to place this away from allies to stop them from taking the damage. Strangely enough, this actually hurts other mobs, so you might actually want to place it on top of the mobs instead, but this might actually be a bug. As you come towards the trash before the Dread Captain Lockwood fight, you'll face deckhands for the first time. While tanking them, make sure you're facing them away as they do have a frontal cleave. After clearing the trash, you're ready to fight the captain. Now, Dread Captain Lockwood has the evasive passive just like the spotter beforehand. Make sure you keep her slowed or snared as much as possible just to stop her jumping about. This is particularly bad on this boss fight as if she is not engaged in melee combat with anyone, she will spam cast Gut Shot, dealing damage and applying dots to random players. She will cast Clear the Deck aimed towards the tank, dealing damage and knocking back anyone within a 10 yard cleave. Everyone, including the tank, can sidestep this cast and they should do. When she reaches 100 energy, she will leap to the nearby ship and the group can no longer damage her. During this time, she will bombard the area in cannon fire which deals a ton of damage to anyone who stands in it, so you make sure you dodge quickly. You will fight three adds, two deckhands and one cannoneer. Face this pack away from the group to make sure nobody is hit by the deckhands cleave, and the cannoneer will also fire broadside at the tank, sending out a cannon which deals damage to anyone in its path. However, this part can be sidestepped. You need to kill the cannoneer and then pick up his cannon which lands on the ground. Doing so does slow you, but it gives you an extra action button which will fire the cannon at the ship and bring the boss back to the encounter area. Once the boss is back, the fight will repeat until she dies, at which point you want to head southwest. You'll immediately engage another firing squad. You want to use the nearby crates and carts as cover as you move towards them. You cannot fight these yet, but simply getting near them will cause them to run off. As you move through the next area, you'll fight Buccaneers, which cast Banana Rampage, dealing damage to players within 7 yards and sending out bananas towards ranged players' locations. If you are hit by a banana or run into it afterwards, you'll slip over and be stunned for 2 seconds, so do make sure you avoid it. Pillagers will vomit in the tank's direction with viscous slobber, dealing damage and slowing players hit. This cannot be dodged by the tank, so they should just make sure that they face this mob away from the group. Demolishers are pretty dangerous big guys that will cast Terrifying Roar, freeing all players within 30 yards for 4 seconds. Ranged players should outrange this ability, whilst melee players should try and position themselves so it is unlikely that they will pull more trash whilst they're feared. They will also cast Crushing Slam, which will send out a series of shockwaves in the tank's direction. The tank and the rest of the group should sidestep this to avoid taking damage and getting stunned. Tempest will cast Water Spray at a random player. This is kickable, but you should really save interrupts for their revitalizing Mist Heal instead. They will also cast Choking Waters, applying a 6 second dot and silence debuff to a random player. This once again should either be kicked, or you can dispel it. Cutthroats will cast Rotting Wounds at the tank, applying a disease dot which reduces healing taken by 25%. This should be dispelled if possible, or players should aim to stun the cast to stop too many stacks from being applied. You'll eventually find that firing squad from earlier, although now they're just kind of waiting there, ready to be fought. Aside from the Ashvane spotter that you fought earlier, you'll have four snipers which cast ricochet at random players, dealing damage which then bounces to anyone nearby. Just try to spread out to minimize the chance that this happens. You'll then enter Unity Square. This area has commanders and snipers that you fought earlier, as well as invaders which apply poison dots to the tank via their melee hits, and destroyers which buff themselves with a 65% haste increasing enrage effect. Both of these should be dispelled or soothed off if possible. Now you want to make sure you clear all the trash in this area before pulling the next boss as he patrols around the square, as you do want as much space as possible. Hadal Dark Fathom is a simple boss with three abilities. The tank should face him into a wall so that when he casts Crashing Tide, all of the damage pools will spawn at the edge of the encounter space rather than in the middle. Players should avoid standing near the statue in the middle of the room when the boss casts Breakwater, as this spawns a ticking damage pool underneath each player's location. Now when the boss reaches 100% energy, he will summon Tidal Surge. This wall of water will appear at a random side of the room and then crash across it, dealing damage to anyone and removing any pools in its path. The group should hide behind this statue at this point, as it provides a spot where the wave will not hit them. After that boss is dead, head southeast towards the shore, dodging the swirly circles as you go. You can mount here, making it far easier to get to the beach without taking damage. You can then begin to fight Vigoth. Vigoth is a unique fight as you do not need to damage or tank the boss directly. Instead, you need to fight his tentacles so that you can fire cannons at him. The group should focus down the demolishing tentacle first, which needs to be tanked, otherwise it will repeatedly deal group-wide damage. You also need to dodge its slam cast as this will knock back and deal damage to anyone caught. 
The other tentacle, which is the gripping terror, doesn't need to be tanked. When you kill it, an engineer will go and repair a nearby cannon. And once that cannon is repaired, you want to enter it and then use the blast to deal 33% max health damage to the boss. You then want to quickly leave the cannon and move away from it once you've used it, as the boss will destroy that cannon and deal damage to anyone nearby. Once this is done, you can then move to the next area, which now has gotten the same setup. So you kill the tank tentacle, kill the engineer tentacle, use the cannon, and then move to the next area. Whilst moving from place to place, make sure you avoid standing within the water for long periods of time, as you will become rooted for 30 seconds, making you pretty useless. You also want to remain in range of each other as you move to allow your healer to keep everyone topped up. Once you reach the last area, the tank should engage the demolishing tentacle whilst all the DPS focus on the gripping terror, because as soon as you've used that last cannon, the boss will be defeated and the instance is over. Now whilst doing this, the boss will cast two abilities at you. Putrid Waters will be applied to a random player, dealing ticking damage over its 30 second duration. If this is dispelled, the player will knock back anyone nearby, potentially into the dangerous waters that surround you. Either outheal the debuff or move away from your ally so that you can be safely dispelled. The boss will also send out a ton of bolts towards your area with his call of the deep cast. Make sure you move from the blue swirly circles to avoid taking a bunch of damage. This will actually leave behind a bunch of fish, and if you kick 15 of them back into the water before the fight's over, you get an achievement. Yay! But that's it for this boss, and that wraps up the Siege of Boralus. Thanks for watching guys, if this video helped out then do drop us down a like. All of our dungeon guides are now complete, so go watch them if you'd like to check out any of the other instances. But if you want far more detailed information with spell talk tips and clear trash and boss strategies, then check out our full featured guides over on Wowhead. A link for that can be found in the description. Before we end, thanks again for the support over on Patreon. You guys made this particular series possible, so thank you very much. And thank you for watching, and we shall see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.